The Outer Worlds is a sci-fi action RPG from the creators of Fallout New Vegas. Set in the Halcyon system 300 years into the future, there is a wonderful story and set of worlds to explore and experience. As Switch owners, we've had to wait a long time to get our hands on this one, but was it worth the wait? I'm James Amero here at Switchwatch. Let's jump in and find out. To kick things off, I'm starting with an overview of the purchasing options and the port performance at a high level. Later on, I'll review the game in our normal format covering story, gameplay, audio and value. In terms of options, they are very simple. There is a physical release. Yes, this includes a cartridge, not just a code in a box as originally planned. It does, however, require a 6GB day one patch that is essential. Alternatively, you can purchase on the eShop. Neither option includes Switch exclusive content. Obsidian are bringing out the first DLC for the game at some point later on this year for all platforms. When a large game is ported onto the Switch, it's almost always outsourced. Companies like Panic Button have carved out a niche as specialists in this field while some others typically deliver lower quality work. Obsidian took the decision to have Virtuous lead the poor, a safe pair of hands indeed having handled Dark Souls Remastered, Starlink, Battle for Atlas, XCOM 2, Spyro the Dragon and more. In terms of features, gyro controls have been added to the Switch version, a very welcome addition when playing in handheld mode and you'll be pleased to know that HD rumble is present and can be turned on or off depending on your preferences. The UI was rejigged to work well on smaller screens and I have to say it does work well. They also expose some of the sizing options and control sensitivity to players so that you can get it exactly how you like it. In the performance department they opted for 30 frames per second at 1080p when docked and 30 frames per second at 720p when handheld and I'm pleased to say that mostly it holds. That's not to say it's perfect if you run and look around quickly you do notice a dip with draw distances struggling to render or a slight delay on screen but not enough to for example make combat less enjoyable. To achieve this stability though, the visuals have taken a pretty big dip when compared to other consoles. The developer themselves mentioned it was a challenge to take current generation games made for 4K PCs to consoles and even more so to the lower powered Nintendo console. Nothing new there, but of course we are mostly used to seeing older games being ported over where the difference is a bit less noticeable. Here it feels as though every detail level has been turned down pretty low. Textures look quite flat both in the environment and in objects and characters. Of course, if you are after the best looking experience then the Switch is the wrong console, but nevertheless, games like The Witcher 3 have shown us that the Switch is capable of some lovely looking visuals which have not been recreated here. Perhaps sensibly, Virtuous opted for performance first and quality second. I was hoping for a little bit more oomph in the looks department considering the long wait. With all of that said though, playing this beast of a game in handheld is a joy. The smaller screen makes lower detail less noticeable and the controls work superbly on the move. By no means is this a poor job. Back in 1901, US President William McKinley is not assassinated at the Pan American Exposition. As a result, Theodore Roosevelt never succeeded him and large business trusts were never broken up. Fast forward to 2285 and a disturbing future lays ahead where mega corporations control every aspect of life and social class determines your lot in life. Various star systems have been terraformed and there's a gold rush feeling where people are encouraged to strike out and lay claim to a system. Equally, justice is questionable in these remote systems with the corporations having so much power and so far away from Earth. Ten of these hyperconglomerates band together, forming the board and striking out to the small six planet Halcyon system. That will take a 10 year cry sleep journey to reach. Two ships are dispatched, the Groundbreaker and the Hope. Fast forward 70 years and the Hope never made it. It's discovered by a mad scientist, Phineas Wells, who manages to revive just one crew member, you. Phineas tasks you with setting out to gather the necessary resources to wake up the rest of the Frozen crew and the Hope, convincing you that the colony will be saved from its tough times by the crew. As far as backstories go, this one is rich and fascinating. Obsidian layered this story into every interaction. There's historical references everywhere. The land itself shows hints of its past and the style is superb. Everywhere you look, there is dark humour on show from Mad Men styled retro posters to the quirky tyrannical rule and opportunistic entrepreneurs entrepreneurs of the colony. For all of that though, the key to this story lays in the present and how the story unfolds during your playthrough. At every turn you are presented with choices that affect the story going forward. Unlike in many grand RPGs, however, Obsidian have implemented this in a way that balances the impact so your choices matter and made choices that are more nuanced than just a simple right and wrong. This rich storytelling, along with solid voiceover work and deep backstory equates to a fascinating, rich story experience that's brilliant and enjoyable from start to finish. 
If you've played Obsidian's Fallout New Vegas, then you will see similarities here. The game is an open world action RPG where you have a primary mission that can largely be parked whilst you explore areas and get involved in local struggles and conflicts, determining the outcomes through your actions. The game's first area, the frontier town of Edgewater, feels like a good old fashioned western town. There's a conflict with deserters who they see as undermining and ruining the good work being done in the local cannery. Of course, to the deserters, they see things very differently. You're here because you've taken a battered spaceship, the unreliable, and need a power converter to get it airborne. This overarching personal objective where you need to get involved in a local problem and have tough choices in how to tackle it, which then has multiple optional side quests, forms the game's approach. You can pick a side, try and make peace, profit, or, and I don't recommend this, kill everyone. You pick up a companion here and set off to resolve the problem, killing monsters and making choices along the way. Unlike Fallout New Vegas or Bethesda's open world epics, the outer worlds feel more localised. The regions are smaller and that works well as you find less filler NPCs. There is a less random open world exploration. Everything is a tighter experience. Yes, there are choices, but it's more scripted and purposeful. Generally, you can approach situations either through force, through persuasion, whether that's intimidation or charm, or by being stealthy and sneaking around and your character development echoes these choices. I love the game's stats and perk system, more on that in a while. Combat leans closer to a first person shooter than the likes of Fallout or Mass Effect. There is no tactical pausing where you line up skills and hit play, everything takes place in real time, though you do have the ability to slow down time, a quirk of your long cryostasis. This is implemented well and gives you a breather, but you cannot get by solely using it. The more you move or if you shoot while slowing time down, the effect wears off very quickly. You have melee, light weapons such as handguns and heavy weapons such as rifles at your disposal. A bit later on, you also get sweet energy weapons such as plasma rifles and the odd quirky science weapon such as a shrink ray. The controls are tight, aiming using ZL and firing using ZR fits perfectly and the little details such as pushing in the right stick for a quick melee attack adds to the sense of action. Your companion's AI is solid and you can even tweak how they play in the settings to make them more aggressive or supportive. They add an excellent dynamic to battles with their skills, which you can use with a D-pad that have awesome effects with little cutscenes. Through the use of mods, you could tweak what type of damage your weapons deal with certain types being more effective against, for example, mechanical enemies or organics. Everything is balanced nicely and the battles are enjoyable. Balancing cover, stealth, damage types and using your companion skills is both natural and enjoyable. The little details are great, such as shooting enemies in the leg to cripple them or charging up a weapon for devastating blows. I love that each time you kill the last enemy in an area, there is a satisfying little cutscene showing a killing shot on how you need to use your health concoction through a gas mask to heal, but need to be careful not to get killed whilst doing it. There is plenty of freedom in how to focus your skills and perks, what crew to assemble and indeed whether you try and opt for negotiation or stealth where possible or just run in guns blazing. Outside of battle there are items to pick up just about everywhere, many of which you can use to break down into items that can help you to keep it in top shape. The mods you can use are effective and give you choice in how you want to approach combat. Equally, one nice touch is that you can select everything for your companions too as they level up. You can pick up perks for them that affect your skills. For example, you can allocate a perk point from a companion that enhances your science skill or your persuasion or you could opt to just make them put a 25% more damage output. As mentioned, the areas are smaller and the unreliable can take you from place to place at your leisure. I find this an upside as there is very little dead time in the game. You move between exploring, fighting, chatting to locals without swathes of exploration and there's even a handy fast travel system as well. That's not to say the world isn't deep. Everywhere you go there are terminals with story and useful tips or passwords to use to unlock doors for example. But when you do get out in the world and look around at the strange and beautiful alien worlds it's a joy. Equally, stumbling on a side quest that unlocks a sweet new satisfying weapon or figure out a puzzle to find some sweet loot is all great fun. The game manages to balance action and deep RPG complexity, finding its own sweet spot where everything is distilled into a tight experience without dead space. I've got much experience fixing actual spaceships. I bet you can in Borston Beans, she could teach me all manner of stuff. The first thing that strikes me about the audio is the superb voice acting. A brilliant and funny script certainly helps, but the voice actors have done a fantastic job here. Justin Bell produces the game's soundtrack, which combines the strange and wonderful orchestral worlds you explore with almost humorous yet dark western style sounds to produce excellent results. The music fits perfectly at home here.
We've already talked about the visuals when compared to other platforms and the performance, but that doesn't encompass the whole story. The style of The Outer Worlds is simply fantastic, combining bleak steampunk machinery with gorgeous alien flora and fauna is a heady mix. Everything from how your weapons and helmets look to the amount of detail that's gone into every little plant is mind-boggling. Even the loading screens are stunning with their propaganda-style posters from the mega corporations, which each have their own whimsical personality, to the beautiful anatomical drawings of the local life. This is a rich and lived-in world, a vision for the future that is more Star Wars or Firefly than Star Trek. In terms of value, this is a AAA game with a AAA price tag. It will set you back £50 in the UK or $60 in the US, but it's a joy from start to finish. As the game is tighter than most of its peers, some might be disappointed that the campaign is probably only around 15 to 20 hours. Though realistically, if you pick up side quests and explore, you are looking at closer to 30 hours of great gaming here. There is no doubt that this is simply one of the best action RPG adventures in years. It takes a lot of inspiration from other titles, stamped its own personality on them, and what we are left with is a rich, deep and tight game that is a joy from start to finish. The addition of gyro controls and excellent UI on the move is very welcome. The visual quality of the port is slightly disappointing, though we should never expect parity with other consoles. I do feel that the visuals have been dumped down quite a lot. If you already own this one on other consoles, it is a little bit hard to recommend again. Of course, if you want to put on the move then great nevertheless having this epic adventure on the nintendo switch is a wonder especially when you consider you can play this on the move a fantastic eight out of ten and that's it from me today guys what do you think about this one it drops tomorrow let us know in the comments section down below a massive thank you to all of our subscribers we really do appreciate everything that you guys do for us if you enjoyed this content then why not consider subscribing and hitting that bell notification to get more stuff like this you can read a written version of this review over at switchwatch.co.uk we'll see you on the next one take care everyone